How you doing everybody? Okay, so today's gonna be kind of a different kind of video. It's gonna be more of a story time video. Um, yeah, so I will be telling you about the time that I may or may not have seen Slenderman. I know, you don't believe me? Calm down, I will get to it in a second. Okay, so, it was about 77 weeks ago, you can do the math if you want, figure out how many months, years, or whatever that's been, but it was a while ago, and it was during the summer, and my cousin was on this health kick, and he just wanted to get fit, and yeah, I was, whatever, so yeah, he invited me to go running with him, and me, I don't run, I really don't run, but I went anyway because he said something about a haunted house, and be, being the curious little kitten I am, I go because the haunted house is just, I love that. I love paranormal stuff, I love anything with ghosts, or, I, I don't know. Anyway, so, he gets me to go, and we start running on this bike trail, and this was back when I lived in Herndon, and we run for a little while, and it was like an hour or so, I think, I don't really remember, it was a long time ago, but we kept running and we come across the house, and we didn't know what to do, but you know, haunted house, so I was like, maybe I can get something on, on video, or of a picture, because I have another story that I'm going to say after this, that made me think, hey, I can get a picture and something will pop up and I'll find something. Cause this isn't the first time that I've experienced something paranormal, as if you want to say. But, yeah. So, hello Mr. Helicopter. <laughs> Sorry, it's just a helicopter over there. I don't know if you guys could hear it, but there's a helicopter. Anyway, so, yeah. So I take a couple pictures. Um, I didn't really think much of it. I was like, eh, this place probably isn't haunted, but it looks kind of creepy. And I will show you all the pictures right now. Wasn't that interesting? <laughs> Y'all probably don't believe me. That first picture was of my Instagram, yes. Um, it was to show you that I didn't find it on Google and like tried making a story up. It's so it's, I have proof to back up my story. But yeah. And so the guy in blue, that was my cousin. Um, yeah. I really didn't think too much of it after I took the pictures, so we went back home, and I, I think it was like a couple of days later, I was looking at the pictures to see if I found anything, or if anything decided to pop up, and there he was, in the middle of the picture in the woods. Now you probably think, this girl's paranoid, she's crazy. It was the way the trees and branches were just going together. It, no, like, I, it, I couldn't believe that something that looked so much like Slenderman could have possibly just been a coincidence and, and, mm -mm. But yeah, and so that was... I may or may not have seen Slender Man, and then for the months after that, I might have been really, really paranoid to go anywhere alone. Yeah. So this happened way back in 7th grade, and we went to this house, me and a couple other friends, went to this house that may or may not have been haunted, and I'm not going to disclose any names or like point anybody out. I really don't talk to these people anymore, and the story was that I think a family got trapped inside the house, and it was like on fire, and people died in there, and I, I don't know, but the house was, um, it had tape on it, and it looked pretty beat up, and it had like, um, wood planks on the windows and everything, so no one could get in and anything, 
but the door, I guess they were doing work on it, and the door was still, like, you could still open it and close it and get in as you please, and the only issue was trying to get up to the house because it was on stilts, because I guess the land was uneven, but I don't know. So it was on stilts, and you needed someone else to boost you up. And so after we did that whole ordeal of boosting each other up and trying to get inside the house, we finally get in and we start looking around. One of the dudes started messing around and banging on the walls and like scaring us girls and whatever and freaking out. Like we always start freaking out. And yeah, so we go up to the attic and it was extremely hot in there. Like it was hotter than the rest of the house. It was insanely hot like it was so uncomfortable like you couldn't even breathe that's how hot it was and i don't know if it was the heat getting to me or making me dizzy or something but when i turned to leave i saw this woman in black just standing in the hallway and i it was one of those things where you see it for a second then you blink and then it's gone and so when I saw her, I was stunned. I was like, what is this? And then I just, I freak out and I like run downstairs and I, I was like hysterical. And apparently the cops were called because since we were screaming so much from being scared, um, the next door neighbors called the police. Thank you guys for almost getting me a criminal record if you're watching this, which probably not. Um, so we talked to them and we told them, yeah, we thought the house was haunted, we just wanted to check out the place, like, you know, to just check it out, see, like, if it actually was haunted. And the policeman said, well, this house is under foreclosure, or he said, well, this house is being owned by somebody and you're trespassing and that's illegal and if you guys come back, then I'm going to have to arrest you and blah, 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 blah. Basically, we would get in big, big trouble if we went back so being good little children and scared seventh graders that we were <laughs> we left and as we were walking back to the school to catch our late bus one of the girls felt like she needed to go back and we were all like yeah 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 like stop playing you know like nothing's back there like it's not haunted or anything and I didn't know what I saw, so I didn't speak up and say anything because I was so scared. I was like, oh, I was scared. And so she kept having a little meltdown and she kept was, she kept saying, I, want, I need to go back. Like, I feel like I need to go back. Like, someone tries talking to me. I did something. I, she felt like she needed to go back, but we didn't. So we kept going back to the school, talking about everything we talked about. And so when um, I was outside the house, I forgot this little side note. When I was outside the house, after we talked to the policeman, I snapped a photo of the front of the house. And I didn't look at it for a couple of days because I, I was so freaked out about the woman in black that I just needed to cool off from that and then I can think about it again. And... So when I did look at it, I found that there was like faces inside the wooden planks of where the windows were covered up and it was, it was strange, it was really strange. There was faces there looking really sad and like screaming for help and it was, it wasn't a good picture, like it, it terrified me. And so when I went to go show my friend who was the one scaring us and banging on the walls and everything, making us all freak out, I couldn't find the faces anymore. Like, they were gone. And I don't know. I don't know where the faces went. I don't... I don't know. <laughs> I, can't, I don't really have an explanation of what happened to the faces. Like, why... Why they weren't there when I tried showing someone else. But yeah, I... I saw somebody about it, like, you know those things where you kind of come across, like, 
a spiritual person and they they know stuff about like the paranormal world and whatnot. And so I talked to her and she was like, yeah, sometimes spirits only want to be seen by one person. And I guess that person is you. And I, I, <laughs> me being like freaked out by a lot that I felt on her, but still kind of freaked out. Cause it was like, why me? Why all this stuff? This stuff is happening really quick. And so I have a hair on my lip. Pro's having a cat. Anyway, so <laughs> yeah. Um, so after that, um, where was I? So we get on our late bus, right? And everything, everything's fine for the next couple days. Nothing really happens. And then I have like, they found it. And I end up having a bruise on my arm, which was like a hand squeezing my wrist really, really tightly. And yeah, I felt pain like after I left the house and everything, but I didn't think much of it, you know? Like you don't think like, yeah, this stuff actually could happen. Like something could have actually hurt me. You don't think about that kind of stuff. Yeah, you, you hear stories and you're like, oh, whatever, like, that's not gonna happen to me. But I felt pain in my wrist when I moved it and then I got a bruise and it, it was bad. It was really bad. I, it was prominent. Like, people noticed I had a bruise on my arm. And, yeah, my cousin asked me and he was like, where'd you get that bruise from? And I was like, oh, this, um... And I didn't know what to tell them because I wasn't supposed to go to haunted houses because my family's kind of religious and they're like, yeah, you don't mess with that kind of, kind of world. And so I was like, oh, um, and I ended up just explaining everything and they were worried and they were like, yeah, I don't do that again, blah, 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 normal religious stuff. And yeah, if I had the photo of the house, I would show you. But since I, it was 7th grade and I had, I had my, I still had my first phone, which was like a Pantech something. It was red and white, but it was on that phone and that phone's long gone. So I can't show you that photo, but if I could, I would. Um... Sometimes I would hang around my park, and I lived near Herndon Middle, if anyone's watching it from that went to Herndon, or lived in Herndon, or blah blah blah. So, I, I lived near there, I, was, I lived a couple blocks from there, and I was, I lived across a baseball field and a park, it was near a dog park, like where that little park was, I was literally across the street from that. It was Spruce Court, it's just so I put that out there because I don't live there anymore, so I don't care. Anyway, so I lived across there, and I would hang out at the park, you know, and I was, like, into photography and whatnot, so I would take pictures of plants, and I would take pictures of myself and edit them, make them look cool, and this one time, I, I was wearing this black dress, and I was taking pictures of myself, you know, looking moody and depressed and whatever, I just, you judge me. Anyway, so, I was in this wooded area, and I will show you the picture after I talk about it, but I was in this wooded area, and I didn't think anything bad happened there, and I don't understand why there was a face behind me, but there was, and you know what, I'll just show you the picture now. Yeah, so there you go. You can clearly see the face behind me. I I don't know. I don't understand why this stuff keeps happening to me. I don't know. Nothing weird really happened after that, but it was still strange because they caught me off guard. Oh, my voice is shaky. <laughs> I'm like shaking because it's weird talking about this and it freaks me out. Yeah, I've never played with a Ouija board before. I've, I don't know, I've 
never tried doing black magic or whatever, never tried doing sorcery or, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. I talked to my mom about this and she is very spiritual and she said that, you know, when she was pregnant with me, she met this psychic or something and she said that my mom had like black figures around her and that they were supposed to be protecting her and whatnot and that um I don't know she she saw auras and everything and she was like your baby has a really she said that I had a soft aura that you know when people have bad intentions I will feel them and that I will suffer from that or something I, I don't know I'll, there was so much information about it and I just I couldn't grasp it all because I was still like why I, I was I had a lot of questions and I didn't understand but yeah so I guess I was more prone to bringing on negative energy and bad spirits or whatever just I guess from what I was told and I've had dreams with black figures and I don't know those are like apparently lucid dreams or something but that's beside the point yeah and also a couple of weeks and months after I left the haunted house um I heard voices and I don't know if it was me just being paranoid or I, I don't know but I heard voices and I was terrified to be home alone I would end up calling my family crying to come back because I heard something and I'm freaking out and I didn't know what to do because there was one time I was recording this YouTube video and it was it's all deleted and gone now but <laughs> that was embarrassing and I had to stop in the middle because I felt someone behind me and they were whispering and it was like a cluster of people whispering and I couldn't figure out what they were saying and so I kind of just froze and I tried um, like I tried picking out bits and pieces of what I understood and I couldn't understand any of it so I was just frozen and I couldn't I, I couldn't do anything I didn't know what to do I was home alone I was calmly making videos and all of a sudden there's whispering and I don't know there was nothing to explain it so those are my paranormal experiences um feel free to tell me your paranormal experiences I'm still really into the paranormal world even though I probably should you know not be that into it because I could get myself in a lot of trouble and yeah if you're gonna play with Ouija boards be safe I don't know the movie Ouija just came out so that's probably gonna, you know, spark some feelings and curiosity in some people to play with them. And honestly, I still do. I still want to play with them. But I'm still terrified of what could happen. And I'm probably still going to be interested in the paranormal world. I'm very much interested in black-eyed kids. If you don't know what they are, I will post a link to direct you to a video that talks all about them and whatnot so you understand what they are. And hopefully feel as interested in black eyed kids as I am because no one else understands me and that makes me very sad so yeah hope you enjoy this little story time with Chewy Monster yeah that's how you say my name Chewy Monster and till next time bye <laughs> I don't know why I do that